What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Sport Exposure Podcast. As you guys, you know, we are here to expose sports stories, sport journeys, sport experiences, and really create a safe space for student athletes. And today we have the ultimate AB here. You did. <laughs> Let's talk about your story. And like I said, I really want to give you your flowers and to say that I've always admired you for Thank you. standing on business. Like no matter what it looked like, no matter what the people said, AB yeah. always been AB. I can so appreciate like that. Me, right? Thank you. <laughs> and here at Sport Exposure, we're all about celebrating our triumphs and learning from defeats. So when you think about your sport journey and that model, what comes to mind? I feel like the sports journey is just always uh, compatible with counting wins and learning from your defeats. And it's just a, just a compatible or the commitment of always trying to get better and just learn from every experience, good or bad, what you could take out of it and just having that hunger and that consistency to always, you know, want to be better. Every year is a new year, a fresh start. So we're just having that consistency and just that on that journey, what you learn from, if it's eating healthier this time or having my trainer fly out to the team to work out, you know, around the team schedule. So I just feel like a sports journey for me just triumphs. Anything I've been through is just for the greater cause of learning and uh, bringing, you, bringing me more so more in tune with my spirituality. I know playing sports, you don't really get to see your commitment or your faith, but I know you probably did FCA in college and, you know, little stuff that you just keep you inspired while you're getting through the bumps and bruises of your body feeling sore or, you know what I'm saying, you away from college, away from your family, you know, or whatever it may be, just being able to uh, learn from it, grow from it, you know what I mean? And, uh, get better in the midst of it. So where did it all start for you? I know you started playing yeah. ball at six. How you know that? You like that? I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, my mama started, first off, I grew up with my mom and my grandma. My grandma came from uh, the Bahamas, Cat Island. So my family was raised right around in Liberty City on 95th Street and 17th, right on the dead end street. Uh, my mom met my dad. My dad was a football player. My dad actually played arena football player. Receiver was one of the greatest players in the Touched arena league. Already. Yeah, I so know a little song. <laughs> yeah, so I always grew up playing football, and I grew up. My I had an uncle. My uncle Kionis, he always inspired me to play football. My mama signed me up to the park, No West Boys Club, when I was like six years old, and that's the same park my mom met my dad at. The same park my dad played football at. So. For me, growing up, I grew up with uh, my mom. Had, I had two brothers, so every summer since six years old, that's what we did was play football, and it was something that we was excited about. You know, something that made our families come together. Something that just provided excitement for us, just being there, be able to compete every Saturday. My uncle took me to get a fade, so it was like a routine growing up, playing football, watching football. It just this was a part of our household. So what was it like growing up in Liberty City? Staying focused, being a student athlete, being in high school. Yeah. Knowing where you want to go, knowing where you're making it from. Yeah. And really trying to wear your own way out of a situation that is not likely for yeah. us to make it out of. I feel like any time as a kid when you're in a position where, you know, you're not seeing positive success, you know, neighborhood guys who sell drugs, do the wrong thing. So it's just... A lot of experiences where you could just see your reality of who you want to be and what are you going for. And I feel like growing up in Liberty City, it just, you know, shaped my perspective in regards of what I'm going to do with my life to be successful. And um, I think, you know, playing football, being competitive, you know, those was the things I started to commit to because I didn't want to be a statistic or one of the guys in my neighborhood that I saw grew up had a lot of talent and made did the wrong thing or went the wrong way. So for me, you know, Liberty City kind of shaped my perspective and what it was like for my mom. You know what I'm saying? For my mom to just be be in that area, in that situation and try to just take care of her kids. So for me, I always looked at football as an opportunity to, you know, better my life, give me a, a chance to be able to be a man and take care of my family and, and, and live out my dreams as I saw my dad do in his career. So for me, I always took it as um, a challenge and an opportunity to better myself and better my life. Cause you know, as a football player, you gotta get better. You gotta be try to be stronger, faster, 
the competitive intangibles, and you got to be smart with knowing what your deficiencies, what's your stuff that you're good at, and then improve those things and, and, and be diligent and be uh, dedicated to always get better. So for me, I was loving that part of the game, just the commitment of being my best self, the challenges that come with that, and the results that come when you discipline and committed and, and seeing that stuff happen. Right. You know, it's a good... So being in Liberty you. City in high school, being a student athlete, trying to make it out, um, mm -hmm. knowing where you want to go, knowing what you want your life to look like while seeing this on a day-to-day -day basis, how hard was it to, for you to stay focused? Because sometimes a lot of us, we struggle with that. Yeah. I feel like you got to stay focused. You know, anything in life is going to take focus and discipline. Believing in yourself, seeing yourself in that position and being able to separate yourself. You know, sometimes I couldn't hang out on the block with my friends or I could I, some some places I wouldn't go just to put myself in a safe haven because I knew where I was going. So any kids out there who aren't focused or, you know, who get caught up in the last of days go focus or being a follower or being influenced by other kids that's not going where you're going. You know, as a kid, you got to learn how to surround yourself with the people that's going where you're going or, you know, you got to separate yourself because in life, you know, I mean, that's the discipline and what it takes to get you where you want to go. You know, you got to be able to separate yourself. You know, it was a lot of distractions. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say I would did. I didn't do a lot of. I did everything right. You know, I had a couple baby moms. You know, the hood was influential. You, you know, having my sex rate up in the, in the city. <laughs> but for the most part, I was a good kid. You know, what I mean, just. Staying driven and motivated and doing what I got to do. You know, I, I think what's distracted me more is just, but it actually helped me out with just becoming a father at a young age. You know what I mean? I think that's probably was my, like, lack of focus. But I feel like those things uh, actually helped me become an even better man because when I went to college, now I got something to go there for. You know what I mean? Not only myself depending on me. You know, I got independence, so... I feel like every form of your life is, you know, an opportunity to grow and you decide your life with writing down your goals. I always like to write them down so I can know. I can always have that reminder in my head, like, yo, this is where I want to go. So if something didn't line up in a day in Liberty City or movements of people, I always had that in the back of my mind of where I got to go and where I need to put myself at to be able to get to where I got to go. For sure. And your student athlete process as far as choosing a school, you had to go take a couple routes. Yeah, I take the long route, yeah. Which is not abnormal for some athletes. Yeah. Talk I, about it. I feel like, you know what I mean, um, no matter what route you take, it leads to the same destination. Some people have longer ones, some people have shorter ones. But I learned to embrace my journey. You know, coming out of, out of high school, I feel like people knew I was a good player, but it's like, yo, he living in a bad situation, he in bad areas. Like, do I have the intangibles or the discipline just to be able to want to go to the next level. So for me, it was just, you know what I mean? As a high school student, just believe in you. You got to believe in yourself when no one else believes in you. Because your coach may not send out the right information to the recruit. You know, he may not call for you. You know, you might not get the right SAT score the first time. So for me, it was like, yo, a lot of just things that I was diligent. Like, I never gave up. I just scored 830 on the SAT. I'm like, yo, I'm going to go take it again. Uh, these big schools didn't call me. All right, forget it. I'll take the uh, scholarship to Alcorn State. I go there. They tell me I'm, I can't. I've been, I'm going to be a prop. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't. I just put myself in the best situation every time, and I didn't give up. You know and, what I mean? And speaking to not giving up, I did see that you were grazed by a bullet right before going to college. How you know that? I do my research, man. Yeah, I was. You know, back in Liberty City, when you used to have parties, it used to be shootouts like crazy. If you see my ear right here, you can see I got grades with one right here. I don't know if you see the love. I could be. I yeah, see. Yeah, so that was a moment in my life, too, when I knew, like, you know what I mean? I got to, I can't be hanging out at these parties in the inner city because that's how they was ending. It was a shootout. Every party is kind of was like, yo. That's how it was in Miami in these times in 2005 and six. And that moment that just prepared me like, yo, God really saved my life. So to That's me, close. it was like, you know what I'm saying? To me, it was like, 
I know I got purpose and I know it's a reason for my being on where I got to go because to be able to persevere through all that, you know, my dad being away playing football, my mom doing the best she can, but Liberty City and the hood of Liberty City is a whole distraction. And me was just becoming, just trying to become my own man and grow in the midst of all that adversity. You know, I was just grateful that I was able to, I didn't even go to the hospital. So, you know what I mean? I was grateful to be able to. That's a blessing. Yeah, of course. That, 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 yeah. That's so I know. A blessing. I think that just dropped me. Timing. Yeah. I feel like it dropped me closer to God and just put me in the right spirits on where I'm from and, and, and where I need to go. You know what I mean? And I think that made me mature as a younger, as a young kid with just knowing like, yo, I can't be a statistic around here just like one of these guys because that's what will happen. So for me, I think it just prepared me to just that hunger and that gratefulness to be able to, yo, whatever school I had to go. Y'all want me to go to Alcorn? All right, I'm going to dominate that. If y'all... Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't say I could play. Y'all want me to go to school? I'm like, all right, that ain't good enough. I'm going to catch the Greyhound for Alcorn, Mississippi, all the way to North, North Carolina, Charlotte, 19 hours. Go mm. to prep school. Go there. By any means. Yeah, whatever I had to do. Because I already knew it was like, my mom in the street life in Miami. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, if I'm going to be successful, I got to go and get it. You know, I already was grazed with a bullet right after high school. So it was like... For me, it was just like, yo, put my faith in God because I already knew what it could have been. So it just made me really become more in tune with my spirit and uh, help me become a go-getter. Because I know I had to, you know, do the right things for God to be able to. Got to. Yeah, to be in that position. In Central Michigan. That's where you ended yeah. up at. Yeah. Central Michigan to Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's a hell of a story. Yeah. We don't hear too often. Really? And a lot of kids, you know, they struggle with having that mindset, thinking that they can't go to the league because of the school they're at. But yeah. like you said, we all end up at the same place. It yeah, no on matter the work. Route, yeah. No matter what route you take, it's the same. You know what I mean? Just like in spirituality, it's a lot of different spirituality, but it's all leading to the same path of God. So for me, it's all about the belief in yourself. As you can see, I'm a handsome guy and everything, you know, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that played in your favor, huh? <laughs> yeah, you feel me? So, like, you know, you got to love yourself. I, I feel like people got to love yourself, believe in yourself, take care of yourself. Because a lot of people may not believe in you. People going to doubt you. People going to talk down to you. People going to do a lot of things. But what you could do for yourself is have a plan if you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Have a plan, write it down, and be in tune with yourself. You know, have a connection with God and believe in yourself in regards to why you're resistant. You know, we all got purpose no matter what it is. So for me, you know, I feel like getting through adversity, it just, I learned who I was and I learned why I got to be diligent and dedicated, disciplined upon what I want out of life. So I think, no matter where you go, what school, if you believe in yourself, you got the right intangibles, you discipline, you work hard, you're going to give yourself a chance. And that's how I always looked at it. If I do the right things, I feel like God going to bless me and give me the chance. And I get the right chance, my heart in the right place, I'm going to do the right thing. Time so that's everything. how I was able to get from Alcorn State. I went there first, I went to Alcorn State. No, I went to, maybe I went to FIU. I went to FIU after Alcorn State. Then I got kicked out of FIU. What happened? What you do? I ain't do nothing. One of my friends, he was, we was uh, working out and the campus police stopped him. And he had pushed the cop down. So he started running. It was a long story, but they, <laughs> they had Mario Cristobal as the coach. He kind of was just like, they're going to deny my admission. So that's before I even went to Central Michigan. That was like 07 in like January, February. Oh, wow. Yeah, so people don't even know that story. Like, I get out of high school, grades with a bullet. I went to Alcorn State. I get back home from Alcorn State, and then uh, I caught the prep school. I caught the bus from Alcorn in North Carolina. Then I got eligible because I took my SAT, passed it. You know, you got to clear the clearinghouse I know. to be an athlete. So I cleared that. Then I went to FIU. It was like 2007 in January. They probably denied my admission. I like I never went in February. 
and I played for Central Michigan that year. I feel like that's when I got shot, just when I was off the field for that long time. That's when it was exact. In 07, before I went to Central Michigan. So it was like, I graduated like 06. I went to prep school 06. And then probably like 07, before I went to Central Michigan, like January, February. And I went to Michigan like August. August 1st as a walk-on. Walk-on? Yeah, I earned a scholarship. Ain't nobody give me none. Everything you see right wow. here is being man of that. A walk on. Yeah, I earned it. Ain't nobody give me none. Pittsburgh Steelers, they didn't give me none. I was a six round pick. They drive somebody else. One thing they can never say about AB, they gave me anything. I earned everything I got. Tom Brady didn't call me for the toilet bowl. He called me for the Super Bowl. Let's get one thing clear. Like, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I want before we move to Pittsburgh, yeah. talk about some of the struggles you went through as a student athlete. At Central In Michigan, yes. I feel like some of my struggles that I went through as a college athlete. Um, I feel like uh, I really did really well. You know, for me, I didn't really struggle with too much being a student athlete. We used to have like six you hours. Been through so much already. Yeah, I already overcame so much <laughs> trauma. This right, was like that easy. Was I'm like, yo, we just got to do six hours. I go to class this time. You got my own crib. I got yeah. So to me, that was like a blessing. You know what I mean? I was just becoming a man as a student athlete, you know, learning how to pay my bills. Now I got an apartment, learning how to make a budget. They paying me this amount of money. You I got, learned that in college? Yeah, because I never was taught that. I mean... Me neither. That's why yeah, I'm asking. <laughs> that's why I learned it at. You know what I mean? The, my coach wife used to show me like, yo, you getting this. Try to, you know... That's tough. Everybody writing down a that. calendar. Some you know what I'm saying? trying to figure it out. Yeah, so I learned that. So... Those intangibles just taught me how to be a man. Like, and I had to file for financial aid for myself as well as because they were like, yo, where your parents? I'm like, yo, I don't even know where they are. So for me, as a student athlete, I feel like what I had already endured coming where I came from and what I've been through, I was just ready to be successful and, and, and do what I had to do for God to take me where I needed to go. So for me, being a student athlete, I was grateful. I was uh, thankful. Just to be out of Miami, Liberty City in the war. Just to be in Central Michigan and experience different opportunities and be able to learn and live out my dream. Let's talk about making your way in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh, like, they couldn't stop me. Like, Pittsburgh, they need me. Like, I'm like, if they don't need me, they might catch cancer. Really? I'm like, test, I'm like, Knowing test answers. Work. You know what I'm saying? Organizations don't want to say they need people, but I was like 95% of the offense. And you knew that. I mean, they know that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Clearly. Nah. <laughs> nah, stats, but Pittsburgh. Stats, so nah, for everything. Pittsburgh was also another opportunity where it was like everything I had been through, it was like, yo, I still had to go do much more stuff. Imagine being there at draft day and I'm feeling like I'm going to get this big opportunity and be drafted early. I see them take another receiver in front of me. So I'm like, yo, I just really trusted God. It's always with some adversity. Like, nah, man, we done been through so much. It can't be no more. And it's always be like more and more. So for me, as a student athlete, I just was like, you know what? Got to trust God. And that's where it go back to your spirituality. I'm like, yo, God brought me through all that I done been through. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just got to trust him and get through what I got to get through. You know what I mean? So as a student athlete, I just always had my faith in God. And it's like, if you believe in God, you believe in yourself and you know that you're going to be in the position God desire you in. So I just never deteriorated myself when they drafted somebody in front of me or when I was late for a meeting and I'm starting because the other guy got hurt where they're like, yo, making up something to put me down. I just always kept a genuine spirit and know like nobody else is in control of my destiny but but God because that's the only way I was... Would it even be able to be in that position? Like, you gotta imagine 17, 18 year old kid as on Greyhounds, like, you feel me, going to, you know, Jackson, Mississippi is like two hours away from where you land in Mississippi. You know, the McDonald's like 45 minutes. Yeah. I went to school. This shit, I got my master's in the South. Yo, it's, it's crazy. Like, I, I ain't never knew back. it was like that. I'm like, <laughs> yo, the back. shower's on the floor. Like, yo, so you, if I gotta take a deuce, I gotta. It was like crazy. But for me as a kid, I ain't, I was just like, Happy for the opportunity to just get a, a chance to be a man and put myself in my own lane and have my own, you know what I'm saying? So for me, 
I was just grateful to get away from Miami because the experience I had just growing up. So I started at Alcorn. I caught the Greyhound from there. You know, Carolina Tech. That's why I went to uh, prep school. And then the rest was history. Talk about adjusting to Pittsburgh, adjusting to being a professional. Adjusting as a professional is just like, ain't nobody going to call you in the offseason and tell you what to do, remind you what you need to do about your ankles or your glutes wasn't strong enough. You as a player and a professional athlete, you got to design yourself. Like the script code is there to help you to get through, but it's like, it's really on you. Like who you desire to be, what type of player you want to be and how hard you're going to work within yourself because there's nobody going to be there in the offseason to be like, yo, bro, you got to, you know what I mean? You got to make that commitment to yourself, just being a pro. And now you're getting money. You got to be able to do well with your money. Save money, not let people manipulate and use you. Because most of the time we coming from situations where we having the most money we're going to have in our families. So they ain't never seen this type of success. And when your kin folks see you got more than them, it could naturally cause a little envious because that's what people want. So for me, having been through everything I have been through, to be at this point in the NFL and, and making money and living my dreams, it was like, yo, every year I just wrote down how much I'm going to save. You know, I just put myself in the right position. We're just trying to remember what I learned in college about working the syllabus, you know, having the plan with a calendar, you know, knowing what I need to pay, you know, having the goal, what I need to save. And then in the process of that, you know, every year it just got better. You know, 2012, now I got a bigger contract. Now the team invested in me. You know, I could get my fashion up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Now I could push it a little bit more. But for the most part, I just, you know, work hard, trust God, had discipline, have faith, you know, never gave up on myself, never doubted myself or questioned God's existence about where I was at and what I was doing. So when did the fame all hit you? Like, when did it, like, really set in for yourself? Like, oh, shit, like, I'm A.B.? I never really think about, you know what I'm saying, like how somebody else betrayed me or how I feel about myself. You know what I'm saying? I just always looked at it as, yo, I'm a spiritual being, something by God to fulfill his purpose on my life and his purpose being a great player, taking care of my families and reaping some of the benefits of the opportunities that God put me in that position. So I don't wake up and be like, yo, I'm AB and how people going to look at me and talk to me. You know, I look at myself as Antonio Brown, as a man who persevered through a lot of adversity and a man that wouldn't be here without God. So for me, I always keep my faith in in front of my mind. I never feel too high, too low about myself. I'm always in the middle. And I'm never get too low or too high. I just stay in the middle because I could have been gone years ago. So for me, I always just thank God about the position I'm in and what he's allowed me to persevere through. And... To be in this position, you know, I don't take it for granted. So I don't look at myself. I look at God and the, and the purpose of life and my spiritual man or how I handle being in this position and, you know, how I make God proud because ultimately that's the the a purpose of life. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do to give back God? So I believe in the spiritual realm. And for me, it's just like, yo, serve God, like, I wouldn't, you know, when I say call God, it's for real. Like, I wouldn't be in this position. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I feel you. I feel so you. So it's never about me. Yeah, and that's one thing. When did you figure out your purpose? Because a lot of us yeah. don't know our purpose. Don't realize that I'm in this situation to break yeah. the barrier, to exactly. break the stigma, to be the first to do something that's never been done before, specifically in sports. Yeah. Like, and that's why I say I admire you because being a disruptor comes with a lot. Yeah. Like being the one to stand up to what everybody else thinks is right or walking away from the league yeah. or walking away from these situations. Why yeah. would you do that? Like, that's what we trying to get to. Yeah. Because it's like you don't persevere through so much and every good thing will come to an end. Like athletes, student athletes, athletes, just professional athletes, everyone just think that. You know what I mean? You're on the top of the world in your career. You think it's never going to come to an end. And we humans. And our bodies are going to break down. You ain't going to be the same as you was there before. And you're going to realize it's really a business. Like, the business is going to show you that it's a business. And I feel like as a student athlete, you're just trying to be successful and make a name for yourself. And when you become a professional athlete, it's like, yo, they paying you for a job. At some point, they ain't going to want to pay you to the likeness of what you want. At some point, they ain't going to want to play you 
or use you to the likeness that you want. And that's all a part of like being a professional athlete yeah. and how you're going to handle it. And for me, it was just like, you know, always was a dominant player. That ain't never changed. Thank God I was able to always be, you know what I mean? Play at the level I wanted to play at. But when the teammates and the organization and people in the organization don't believe in you and don't put you in that position that you desire to be in, then you got that choice. And I feel like in life, like, everything will come to an end. Either you get cut, either you get replaced, either you walk away like AB. So I feel like my little exit was a lot more glamorous than people may or would have saw or they may have understand it. But that was just me at a time where I done persevered through all this stuff. And it's like, yo, I'm a 32-year-old player. We at the end of the year. I'm halfway hurt. And it's like the team, the, the quarterback, the people that bought me here do not longer serve my best interest. You know, and being a football player is a team game. You need everybody to be on the same accord. It's not like basketball where it's like, yo, I can just take this ball and like whatever happened, I just did whatever I wanted. It's like you got to represent the team. So I just knew in that situation when I done been through so much and seeing, learning when the media start to put out, you know, uh, narratives that may not be true. It's like, yo, I done came so far and persevered through so much. And I was still in therapy. It's like, yo, if it's not right for me, I could walk away. I already did all the right things with my money, and I'm a 12 year player. You know what I mean? And that's an accomplishment. Yeah. A lot of people don't see that many years in the league. Yeah. So, and not even years, big years, like leading the NFL catches. I done done it all in the NFL, like at what a player desire or inspire to do, you know? And uh, that's what it's about, man. It's about. Serving God first and foremost, because I couldn't do none of this without God. I tell you, you said I got shot two two thousand seven. I wouldn't even. You might not be having this conversation. Exactly. So, just to keep that in perspective, because you know, as an athlete, you got to keep the perspective. You know, I, I always feel like I was the kid coming from Liberty City that was fighting for everything I got. So I already I appreciate it overly. You know what I mean? And I don't got through so many situations by the grace of God. So it's like, yo, I already know God going to come through for us. If it's negative right now, perfect. You know what I mean? It's going to get a lot better if it's the worst it could get. So to me, I just learned them intangibles. I learned them qualities just to understand, like, trust God, having faith. And my grandmas, you know, I had a lot of grandmas behind me, like, who always gave me that faith and that, you know what I'm saying, that belief and that heart. You know what I mean? So... Those things that just always, you know what I mean, stuck with me. Like, my uncle always told me, like, yo, it's big checks in the NFL. Like, and that was when I was a kid, you know what I mean? My grandma always used to tell me I'm special. So to me, it was like, believe in God. You know, my grandma came from Cat Islands, Bahamas, and created a life for Liberty City, just learning, knowing how to sew and do business. Sugar cane trees in my backyard. She hanging the clothes on the ropes. So my grandma, like, real old-fashioned. So, you know, I just was raised with the right structure, even if it's right or wrong, you know, I always choose what's right and just had God on my side and had the favor. You know, when you got favors, you got favor. It ain't fair. Yeah, I'm you know. About all the time. <laughs> favor is not fair. Yeah. And choosing to walk away from the league. No. We talk about that moment all the time. We saw it. Um, and at that moment, me being a former student athlete and also a sport professional, yeah. from my angle, I want to know what led up to that. Because things yeah. like that just don't happen. Yeah. We all have tempers. We all have our breaking points. You don't just act like that in that moment. Exactly. What led to that? Well, it was a couple of things that led to it. You know, uh, one being it was like, I was already hurt. They already know I was hurt. Now while I'm hurt, you know, when you're a veteran player that's you're on the roster past four to five years, you still, your contract guaranteed. So they still got to pay you. So in the midst of me being hurt, I had a torn deltoid ligament in my left ankle. <clears throat> so they knew I was hurt. All of a sudden, they investigated me for COVID. I was all over the news. So I'm like, yo, what's going on? COVID, like, yo, my shit's official, but it's on the news, like, all over negativity. So I'm like, damn, these guys don't want to pay me. You know what I'm saying? So they figured out something to put in the public. Why I'm hurt and can't play to take my money that they supposed to pay me. 
So now I'm like, damn, the NFL is a little aggressive because I'm like, yo, why would they? I'm hurt. Like, I'm out of the way. Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Why target me on the news? Like, right. So now I know, the whole month they're like, I'm hurt. They investigating. So like people calling, like the, the reporters calling people that's close to me. But you know, I'm not saying that because I'm like, yo, I know this shit's not real. But I'm just being mindful of other people I'm playing with because I know they're calling them too. So I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting back. These guys trying to get me to play like, but this is how God works. As soon as I'm about to come back to be able to play, because they suspended me now. So I was like, yo, they just put a timeline and be like, all right, bro, you can't play. We're not paying you. We're going to put this on you, suspend you. And it's like, the NFL create their own narratives. They got their own news station, ESPN. Whatever the fan here, that's what they believe. The perception is not the real reality. Like, they don't have a code of ethics where it say, you can't really say this about a player. They can say whatever they want. And then that's what the media yep. believe. And that's what's already out there. So now they're investigating me. Now it's just really to take my money. So now imagine how that make you as a professional athlete when it's like, yo, I'm really hurt. And that's what you want to do. I'm not even getting paid. It's top money. This ain't even nothing really, to be honest. But it's like, it just showed me, you know, how nasty, the, you know, it's a business. So like they can pretty it's much nasty. do whatever they want. So now I'm like, dang, I saw that. Now when I'm about to come back off suspension, they get three players that got hurt. One of their receivers tears ACL. You know what I'm saying? One of the guys pull his hamstring and the running back pull his hamstring. So it was like, yo, they need me now. Like, I'm when I'm coming back from suspension. So it was like, yo, at least I'm going to be able to get an opportunity. So as an athlete, you know, as an athlete, when you then been through some psychological trauma, where it's like, damn, this pissed me off. Only way I could really get back at them is going to feel and be- Go crazy. Go crazy and be good. So. Yeah. I come back, play. I go for like 100 yards. We beat Carolina Panthers. I go crazy. But I notice, like, yo, they don't want to even throw me no touchdowns. Like, I got 100 yards help us win. I think I had maybe 10 catches. But I notice, it's like, yo, this is a targeted game against me, whereas, like, they directing drama over my head. It's just the questions they ask me, how they deal with me. So now I'm like, yo, it's not even in my best situation. And notice I'm still hurt. You know what I mean? My ligament is not fixed. It's just that like I have four weeks to just be suspended and not get paid. So now I come out of all, all the drilling. So next week, my foot is like swollen up. I'm like, coach, I sent him a picture. Coach, man, if you want to get to the playoffs and win, bro, I think these next two weeks, bro, you should just let me. Rest up. Yeah, so we could come. Yeah. yeah, so we could get to the real Super Bowl. That's what you're trying to win. That's yeah. what, you know what I mean? So now he like, nah, we not resting. And man, I didn't practice all week. So you know what it's like as an athlete, you ain't do no, you know, you got to have your, your reps in. Yeah, your routine, your intangibles. So you already been a part of what's going on. So you know, situationally, I done did this, I'm ready to go. So I didn't practice all week. So now um, Tom Brady, his trainer, I pay him money to train me. So now it's just like, he was telling me to play two weeks ago before these guys got hurt. He felt like I didn't listen to him. So I paid him money. He's not, he's telling me he's not even going to like do the soft tissue or train me. So first thing in my mind, I'm like, yo, I should slap this nigga. Like, imagine you pay somebody a hundred thousand and it's like, he supposed to do a job. He's not going to do it. Now he tell me he don't, he not going to do it. I'm like, yo, I thought I paid you. So I'm like, you know what? In this situation where I know I could have acted out, I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to even worry about it. I seen these guys turn on me already. So you know what I'm saying? I seen the quarterback, you know what I'm saying? Tell me, come to meetings while they taking my money. Like, nah, bro, I can't come to no meetings if this is how they're going to treat me. So I just feel like I was already due to the side, treated, you know, put bad narratives. So at that point, I'm like, yo, this team ain't really with me. Like, I'm already hurt. They're not even having my well-being. The guy who I paid, the guy who I came with and paid his guy to take care of me, he done with it. He wiped his hands. The coach already saying he didn't even care about winning the Super Bowl. He said, shit, we ain't resting. We playing. So it already showed me what they, you know, I was able to fend for myself and be in a position where I could make a man-like decision. Do you know what I'm saying? To do the right things and walk away. You know, most people coming from what I've been through and dealt with what I done dealt with when situations of facing adversity don't go their way. You know what I mean? That could probably make them act irrational or act out or do something that Exactly. Put him in a 
in a bad position. I deal with my therapist and deal with people who get therapy, who play sports, should do when they have a trigger or something happen where it's out of their control. Should walk away, and that's what I did. Walk away, you know, I told the fans, bye. I took off my shirt, you know, I showed my abs, you know, I'm a football player, but I just feel like that was that was like my liberation. Like I was liberated in a time where I How carried- How did you feel afterwards, after you left the stadium? I felt great, man. My distribution had dropped my song, Pitting Out the Palace. So I was already in like almost a transition mode. You know what I mean? I was doing podcasts. I did Simvis. Man, I made more money that week than I was going to make with the Temple. Wow. And they had this, some illegal, went on record, like said they got rid of me. It's like, yo, I was just at the game. The coach told me to get the hell out of here. It just so happened I took them up on it. Like, yo, I'm going there. So it was just, I feel like they got caught in a lot of backfire and just, I feel like it worked out well. You know what I mean? I was able to, you know what I mean? Be able to walk off the, because most people in their career, it usually don't end how they want it or they wish they could have. You know, I was able to thank God to put myself in the right position, in the position that I wanted, not some a position that I talked to somebody else about. You know what I'm saying? I was able to control my destiny. You know what I'm saying? Like people say, walk off on your own too. And, and you did just that. Yeah, and, and that's always been my goal, like to not limp away from the game, to be able to walk away when I'm ready. And and that's by the grace of God, I was able to do that. So to me, you know what I mean? Being able to express it and give people the perspective to look at it from all angles because I don't, you know, I started my own news station now, CTSPN, where we could talk about people with traumas and what they had to deal with and how they remain great. But I, that's how I express those are some of my traumas that I was able to manage because I already been traumatized way more worse than this. So, like, this, this right here is like, yo, this is easy. Like, I cuss yeah. them out and I walk away, it's over. You know what I'm saying? So, I just feel like from that situation, it just showed that, you know what I mean? You could have the confidence as a person, you know, as a black male, as a leader. You could believe in yourself, you know, you could have that relationship with yourself. And you ain't got to be compatible, you know what I mean? Compatible or aggressive or you could walk away, man. Be the bigger person and do what's right for yourself. I know in that moment, it may not look as though I was the bigger person because how they paint the picture. But I did was was right for myself. You know, if it wasn't right for me, walk away. Right. And leave it. And you mentioned a few things. You mentioned therapy, trauma. How long you been in therapy? I get therapy just not even because of trauma, just for relationship building, just, you know, just for insightfulness to just have somebody you could talk to that don't got, you and know, a helps. role on you. Of I course. Hope, yeah. yeah. And I, I preach that to a lot of people. Like, I had therapy when I was going through something. Mm-hmm. And even now, like when my life is on the up and up, I don't see myself not ever having a therapist. No, nah, you need a therapist because, you know, you got to be able to have, be able to talk to somebody who don't have no relationship or no role or, over you. And that could be able to just give you just positive, constructive stuff that you could be able to talk on the confide in this, like where you could confide and trust and just believe that someone's there for your best interest. You know what I mean? If you're not I'm seeing something right, it, yeah. To be able to put you in the right position without even, without having to roll or get something off you. You know, as an athlete, you know, somebody always looking to gain off your hard work. Not only the exactly. team, your peoples, that's what they become. That's a trauma in itself, knowing that you got to go out there and be an earth body. They're going to bang your body up. But these people that don't really got to do nothing want to reap the benefits off this. Exactly. And I preach that all the time about being an athlete at any level. We put our bodies on the line. We put our minds on the line. Yeah, you put your um, heart on the line. You put your lifeline on the line. Like, yeah. there's so many things that we that's going on at home that you can't be present for. Yeah. And mentally, that can mess you up. Yeah, a because that's not in you, therapy or yeah. if you don't know how to handle that. Yeah, that's you why you out. see these kids lo- losing their minds after school. Yeah. Because it's, it's real. It's real. And you said yeah. a lot of trauma that comes with being a professional athlete. Yeah. People know you got money. They got all the news. Your family know you got money now, so how you going to handle that? You know, people begging you or people manipulating you or people stealing from you or... How'd you handle it? I just don't got a lot of friends that really deal with a lot of people. I just try to put myself in a good position and know where I came from. See, I came from where I just had to, you know, I've been through a lot and know how to appreciate it. So I knew how to handle it before I was in those positions and just learning from it. 
you know what I'm saying? Getting therapy, knowing like, yo, I got to control this. And football always was a place where I was able to take care, take out my anger or get away from my real life of having to deal with, you know, the everyday struggles of being in Liberty City, seeing my mom or my dad missing. So football was that place where it was like, yo, I could take my energy out and do something that I really love and brought my people's excitement. So for me, I always took it as like this was something that brought my family together. This was something that made me excited and made people excited about me. So I never took it as football was just trauma. I feel like I was being able to traumatize other people. You know what I mean? I just yeah. took it as positive influence for me more so. Like how everybody look at it like, you crazy, you play football? Like I look at it as an opportunity to change my life while bettering myself and being dominant. And some of us struggle with the transition to not having that outlet. Yeah. Like from playing football, it's a very physical sport. So if you're having a bad day, you get to paid to go fight somebody, basically. Yeah, just be aggressive with it. <laughs> I was a post player. I was a, a power forward. I so enjoyed throwing folk, folk around. Yeah. That was my outlet. But when yeah. you don't have sports in the picture, you got to find another outlet. Because exactly. you can't just go fighting folk. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just go fighting people. Yeah. And some people struggle with that. We don't look yeah. at it from that lens. Exactly. How was your transition to not having that outlet, that specific outlet in football? As soon as I walked out the field, you know, my distribution and, and video, they dropped my music. So I was able to, you know, still take that creative aspect of, you know, being creative and, and just trying to make like whatever I'm trying to create is like the same with the football field. Like, yo, if I want to make big plays, how do I make them? So I just use that same mentality. Like, yo, if I want to be creative in the music space, like how do I get people feeling a certain way? How I create that emotional energy? And it's just, you know, when I walked out the field, having that distribution, drop the music, and being able to, you know, just get that energy out. You know, you can't go on the football field and run it, but I could go in the booth and hear a beat and like express myself and be creatively Think about when I'm performing this, how do I want the people to perceive it? So I feel like you just got to find stuff with therapy and stuff that you could do with your family, businesses, whatever your motivation is. But you got to know as a football player, it's always, you know, as an athlete, student athlete is always next. And you ain't going to be able to do it forever. So you got to know, like, it's going to come to an end. And, you know, I feel like sometimes as athletes, we're not really ready for the ending. You know what I mean? You ain't really ready to transition to feel like they moving you out the way. So it's like you just got to, as an athlete, one, you got to be truthful with yourself to understand and know always the game's going to come to an end, whether you like it or not. You know, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, you got to know that, you know, when sports, when people talk about that light at the end of the tunnel, you got to know the light at the end of the tunnel is the game going to come to an end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you got to be happy with how in, in regards of, you know, how you finish your career. Did you make the goal money amount that you set out to? Did you accomplish everything that you set out to? And those are some of the intangibles of keeping mental health, but just knowing what you set out to do and being purpose driven in regards to what you want to accomplish. So for me, mental health is, you know, having someone you can express your thoughts to and rationalize your thoughts to maybe Put them in place if you don't got them figured out. And being true to yourself as an athlete, knowing, you know, your position and where you're at and knowing it's going to come to the end and being cool with that. You talk about the trauma. We talk about CCESPN. Yes. Why the name? I just feel like, you know what? People people in the world, ESPN, they really talk about people negative all day. You know what I'm saying? And it's effects on putting people out negatively. And that's pretty much traumatizing you from just being on ESPN, because it's all negative, right? That's yeah. what's driven in the sports world, negativity. So that's why I wanted to start CT ESPN, because to show people what a positive influence of what media could do. Imagine if we was all covered as positive people, how much more it'll make human people want to do more, be more, because they get in looked upon or covered in the right way. And also sharing the traumas of what people have to go through or get through just to be in the position they in and how they get through that and remain great. So for me, just showing the intangibles of people overcoming traumas, dealing with adversity, how you deal with it, how you overcome it and how you 
remain great. Because I know ESPN is tearing people down left and right. That's what all the segments is about. So I was just thinking about if we could create a network that's positively driven, you know, how much more it could make athletes, student athletes want to be more great. Because student athletes in college experience a trauma. They're getting paid now. So much trauma so they got to deal with, with now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just traumas on every level that we got to get through as human beings. You know, we all human. So we all experience it in some form or fashion. It's just, you know, collaborating and communicating in regards to giving people the knowledge and the resources of how you overcome it, how you deal with it. Sports exposure, you know, exposure and sports of... That's why we're here. You know, how we're dealing with it. And... um I think that's what life's about, you know, letting people see the side of the DNA makeup of human people of, you know, how they deal with it. Yeah, humans. Exactly. <laughs> humans first. Exactly. And you said so much. Uh, first, let me ask you, what's the wildest thing you heard about yourself? Oh, the wildest? <laughs> <laughs> that you like heard about wildest? yourself? You saw a headline, somebody called oh. you, was like, yo, you in the paper, they saying this, like, that you knew. I haven't seen it all. I mean, none of it stick with me because, you know, as media is like, they'll, they don't got a code of ethics. They're just selling it to make news or to just make me be like a demon. But I done seen so many. This is, I mean. And ain't one that you said it would be like, had it been the wildest, like. I mean, all of them. I mean, I don't know none that's wild. I mean, the wildest. <laughs> I don't know, man. People write whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? It's just me. I don't, I don't carry it or it don't stick to me. Me is just entertainment and just, it's not my reality. You know, that's the perspective they create. Yeah. That's what the, that's the money they want to make. And that's what they monetize. You know, they monetize off traumatizing yeah. people. So to me, it's a business. Everything's a business. Of course, you know what I'm saying? So to the sports is business. I know when you black flashy and you do great things, you know, a lot of people going to monetize it. In the regards of what they, how they feel like makes sense to them. To me, it's not my reality. I don't live for TV, newspapers, and, you know, that's what sell the coin, but that's not reality. You know, that's their perspective. But I done seen a lot of articles out there. I mean, and none that I remember just off the tip of my mind. Like, that was just wild. I'm pretty sure you probably heard some wild ones. <laughs> if you got something, you can let me know. No, you know I, I want to know from your point of view, I don't from really your carry perspective. Him. That's a good thing, though. Yeah. My perspective is like, yo, if they don't call me like a killer or, or a faggot, like, yo. We good. Yeah, you good. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything else, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, that's what sell newspapers. So to me, it's like, I noticed that if they if they writing up about my name, that mean that it's productive. You know what I mean? They selling it. That mean the name's still hot. You know, as a student athlete, as a professional athlete, it's about keeping your name hot relevancy, you know what I'm saying? Legacy. Yeah. You know I'm going to Hall of Fame in 2027. You know I walked out the field three years ago and I'm still like, you know, giving people inspiration. So that's what it's about. Keeping, not even keeping your name alive, but just keeping your legacy alive and your influence and how you influence people. As a human, the highest act of a human is just inspiring, motivating someone else. So to me, you know, it just inspire you know be an inspiration to someone be a motivation to someone be a light to someone and that's what it's about in the world you know leaving a legacy for someone that be motivated by not only my kids but any kid in the world who's facing adversity and, and, and will and, and on the verge of giving up when you hear this is like yeah. nah i ain't gonna look what he went through you know what i mean and i'm trying to instill that hunger in kids nowadays to be able to be go-getters, be young men's, be, you know what I mean? Be diligent, be dedicated to your craft or whatever your craft is. It may not be athletics. It may be mentals, you know, it may be physical work, whatever it is you choose in life, you know, just get the most out of it, be your best self and uh, be your best critic, you know, build yourself up, learn from yourself, challenge yourself because that's all the intangibles of, things that's going to get you by in life. I think as an athlete, we feel that athletics is life, but it's not life. They can't take my same athletic perspective from the field and life. It's not going to work. So I feel like, you know, as an athlete, you also got to learn how to, you know, keep your 
keep a separate mentality. Like you said, we can't go around beating people up and being aggressive. You know, that's only work in the field. Yeah. You got to know when you get off the field, you know, this real life. And, you know, it's a different mentality you got to take. You know what I mean? And sometimes that can feel like you live in two different worlds. Yeah, you got to be two different an people. Athlete yeah. And being an AB. Yeah, you got to be two different people. And how, 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 where's the balance? Like, cause you being A, B, the athlete, that's what we see on the media. That's what we see yeah. on ESPN. They're going to make you out to be all these, all these type of people. And yeah. you have to st remain to stay strong in who you are as the person, who you know you are. Exactly. And that's a part of being an athlete. You can't never lose yourself or lose who you are. And I feel like getting scrutiny, getting criticism, it may sometimes it, 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 it like lose people because you become, you go, you can become worried about what people saying and worried about how people treat you. It's like becoming an athlete, you know, you got to have thick skin. You can't let people bring you down and you can't let the media put perspective on you, deteriorate you with their perspective of trying to make that be your reality. It's like you got to remember as a as student athlete or athlete who you is, what you represent, where you come from, what you're doing. And not let media perspective change your reality because the media sells tickets. You know, they make money. They don't care about who they hurt. It's all about creating narratives, making people look the way they want them to look and making their money. So to me, it's like, yo, you always got to memorize the athlete, student athlete, who you is, what you represent, what's your purpose, why you pay this, and you got to have your blinders on. You can't let outside perspective get into your spirit and deteriorate you from your reality. You know, ESPN perspective, their perspective is just their their perspective. It's not no code of ethics, it's no truth, it's nothing. You know, they can write whatever they want and yeah. it's good. You know, because they don't have no code of ethics of people challenging them in regards to their perspective. So for me, it's like, yo, that's just their perspective. That's what they sell in the newspaper. That's what they monetize off. That's not the reality. You know what I mean? So you got to be able to separate perspective and reality as an athlete. You know, you got to be able to just be able to see your goals and block out the, the distraction. And that's why therapy is important because you got to have somebody you can consult with this, you know, consult with these things you're going to face as an athlete, being able to get that scrutiny and criticism because that's come with being an athlete. People going to call you out. They see you on TV. You ain't do something the way they want it. You miss a shot, you don't make the catch. You know scrutiny and criticism are gonna come with that. So you gotta be able to seek therapy to be able to deal with that adversity or deal with people. You know, where I'm from is the hood. People rank you all day. Just cause they say you ugly don't mean you ugly. That just mean they wanted to mess with you. Mess with yeah. you. you know what I'm saying? But people may not understand that not coming from the background where we come from or what people, that's just normal black people shit. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have thick skin as an athlete. And I recommend everyone have therapy because not a lot of people who maybe not come from our background or where we come from or dealt with adversity may not be able to handle people talking about them. Me, is like, yo, if they ain't talking, then they don't like you. So it's like, you know, I learned to create, you know, take another approach or another perspective about criticism, you know, because criticism and answer with achievement. You know, I don't really combat criticism with, back and forth words, it's just criticism should be answered with achievement because if you ain't achieving nothing, then you're going to be getting criticized. So if you're achieving stuff, then you shouldn't be getting criticized. People should be talking about what you have done and how, you know what I mean? Yeah, but even having that mindset, no matter how hard you, your life was, the background you come from, it get heavy sometimes. Yeah, but heavy and is the head to wear the crown. You, you know what I mean? You know, so much is given, much, much is, is tested. Yeah. So if you're going to get a lot, you got to go through a lot. And God chooses toughest soldiers to go through the toughest battles. And I don't make excuses, man. If you're going to get blessed a lot, you're going to have to get through a lot. You're going to have to overcome a lot. And that's what student athletes and yeah. athletes got to know. If you want this life, this was going to come with it. You got to be able to persevere, overcome. You got to have discipline. You got to have faith. You got to believe in yourself. You can't give up on yourself. People are going to call you out. They're going to count you out. They might put some other people in front of you, but that can't deteriorate your attitude of your belief in yourself. And that's what life's about, you know? And that's what the world's about, you know? And some of these intangibles you can learn in football, you could take from 
But this real life in terms of some people going to turn you down. Some people might not like your work. Some people going to talk about you. Some people going to hate on you. Some people going to get in your way. territory. Exactly. So you just got to embrace it all. You know, it's a part of, part of life. And as long as you got God with you and you do the right things, that's all you could do. What's the biggest lesson sports has taught you? The biggest lesson? I mean, sports been the biggest blessing for me. You know, that only has allowed me to change my life. It allowed me to fulfill my life, not with just material gain. It made my life purpose because now my life got some purpose because I put purpose in my work. My walk and talk and breeze and resume, resume with everything I did in sports allowed my kids to be motivated, other kids to be motivated, allowed me to go different places in the world I never thought I'd be able to go. May allow me to create fans and connections with people I never thought I'd be able to connect with based on the sports journey. So for me, you know, sports not only taught me lessons, it's it been able to bless my life. You know, bless me as a man with just learning intangibles of discipline, how that's important. You know, how hard work is important, how all believing in yourself is important. So sports not only played a role in my life as a lesson, but for most important, it was a blessing. And right here on Sports Exposure, you know, we don't never want to get outside of the blessings that sports been to us because not only it took us all over the world, you know what I mean? But it also, you know, shaped our perspective on who we are today. Yeah. So for me, you know, I, I think sports was a blessing for me, you know, because what I learned from it, what type of man I became from it, you know, the intangibles that was able to put me in this position. And you still persevere. So many gotta, people have counted ABL. Yeah, they count me out crazy. <laughs> it's, it's so many people. I've been counted out so many times I couldn't count it. <laughs> but that's what life's about. They counted out Jesus. If you're going to be great, you're going to have some doubt, some count out, some people change on you, some people give up on you. As long as you don't give up on yourself. And that's a part of life, which is believing yourself, you know, having God at the center of your being and just know like at the end of the day, you got God as all you need in the world. You know, human people, they're going to change on you. That's a part of life. And you learn, to, you, you live and you learn to grow from those things. But in reality, you keep God first. You keep your purpose at the forefront of your, of your life of, and, and appreciation of life, of your life. And live, live towards, working towards the goal of what you want to become or what you want to accomplish. And you still young. You yeah, a lot of time to go. Yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still up for the Hall of Fame. I got a lot of, I still ain't had my best day yet. I'm still looking forward to it. And that's the mentality you want to carry. You want to live and keep that perspective of just being grateful every day. I don't take nothing for granted. Like I said, I don't get too high, too low. I stay right in the middle because I know, like, God has prepared the table for me. When it's all said and done, what you want the legacy to be? Because you're still building it. Yeah. When it's all said and done, I just want my kids, kids, kids to be like, you know what? That's the great, great, great Brown. Because, you know, a legacy is about what you leave behind for your family and how they look at you and how they respect you. You know, when you leave this earth, somebody else tell your stories and how you, how they want it to be, you know, but the memories you create with the people you love and the time you share with the people you love is, you know, that's going to be your legacy on what you leave back for them and what you give to them the next generation to be able to take further than what you did. So for me, you know, that's legacy of what I leave behind and, you know, how I leave it. How do your kids respond to what they see in the media about their daddy? Well, they understand it now. They know their dad is what they call a celebrity. You know, a celebrity in America, they could paint them out to be however they want them to be. But that's not humane. My kids know I'm a human and being humane, they come with emotions and perspectives and kids know what their father represents and what I stand for. The stuff that the person, you know, that's the reality. You know, my dad is right here in reality, taking care of me and providing and doing, making sure that I'm living according to the standard of, you know what I'm saying? What my, what I provide, but for the most part, it's just, it's just understanding your perspective in life is, you know, what you leave for, the people that's coming after you, your family, your kids. And that's your legacy. You know, legacy ain't what you did in the football field. I know people like to think their legacy and what they did, 
You know what I mean? And sports. You know, it could, it could be looked upon as a legacy, but that was a job. And that was a job to be able to get a lifestyle, to be able to leave a legacy. You know what I'm saying? Because a legacy what you leave behind for the next generation. Not what you do with your earth body and accomplish earthly things. You know what I'm saying? Legacy is what you leave behind for your family to inherit. So I think sports that I've been able to attend that, attend, be able to test to that and accomplish that within sports. So, you know, sports have been able to allow me to, you know, let my family live off a legacy, not only just with the accomplishments I did, but just what they seen I set up off those accomplishments for them to live off. And that's legacy. Who is AB outside of what we see? I'm really a fun, spiritual guy. You know, I love truths. I love entertaining, funny. I love to crack a joke. I just love to be a good representation to my kids and spend time. You know, time more important than money. Relationships more important than money. And um, I just love to have that freedom of living free, you know, being free, getting up, spreading my wings, being as tall as I could be, just living, you know what I'm saying? Having a different perspective of life, you know what I mean? Looking at a lens of gratefulness, like where I came from and being in this position, like I'm just so thankful for God, you know what I'm saying? Because it don't happen like this, you know what I'm saying? So I just know that I owe it to God just for, just for him favoring me. So for me, you know, I'm a spiritual being. I love to share truth, read truth, and, and be a free spirit in, in regards of just living my purpose. You know, my purpose is just serve God. You know, that's the real purpose of life. So for me, I'm a spiritual being. I just, you know, love my spirit in regards of connecting with God and fulfilling my purpose while I'm here. I would say, do you think that knowing your purpose is what kept you headstrong and who you yeah, are? Yeah, of course. Because you're it, still here smiling. Yeah. you still here having course. a good time. You, you know, those are yeah. things that we don't see too often considering your story and your background. Yeah, well, you got to have perspective in regards of, you know, just being grateful. You know, all in all, I know where I came from and know where I'm at and just understand that, that put me at peace. And when you're at peace with knowing what God did in your life and what you overcame and the favor that he got on you, it's like, man, I owe it to him. You know what I'm saying? I can't take no credit for anything I've done for up to this point or whatever I'm going to do next. And it's been by the grace of God. And that's all I can encourage people in the world is like, yo, have a relationship with God and, you know, stay connected with him. You know what I mean? And you could do some unbelievable things in people's yeah. lives and just yeah. look at my life and whatever he been able to do for me up until, like, you know what I mean? Just what I've been able to get through. So it's just like, you know, you, you know, it's real. For sure. And finally, sport, on Sport Exposure, I always ask my guests. Yeah. What is it about sports that you want to expose to the next generation of student athletes? Because there's a lot, Spose. as you know, yeah. that they don't tell you. They don't teach yeah. you. I just want to expose, you know, sports athletes dealing with trauma. You know what I'm saying? Because people going to call you crazy. People going to paint a narrative of you. People going to bring you down. I just want to expose you to, you know, get therapy. Remain true to yourself. Don't lose yourself in this game, being an athlete and trying to be something you're not or be something other people want you to be. Have a relationship with God. Go to the FCA. Have a, you know, purpose for your life, a plan for your life, where you see yourself at. Write it down. You know what I mean? Don't let the sports world move you so fast where you lose yourself in regards of your journey and what you're trying to get out of it. You know what I mean? You know you're going to come out of it. So, like, what do you want to get out of it? Know your why, why you do it. And just, you know, be the best, man. Keep God first. Call God. You know, God is everything. And pursue your life with plans and purpose. If you got plans and purpose, you got God with you, man. You got a, you got a chance to be successful. And that's all I could say about that. Chance you was that AB was AB because God in favor. And uh, AB is still AB. You know what I mean? <laughs> you did. Well, I appreciate you so much for stopping Thanks by. Thanks for having me. I was. I appreciate you for telling your story. Did I create a safe space for you? Yeah, you created an amazing safe space. You got an amazing room here at this Come sport, on now. Sports podcast. <laughs> Yeah, you got a nice room in here. You got a lot of motivational icons on the wall. It's really futuristic. And you really took a, you know what I mean? Took me to a point where it's like, yo, 
we dove into the story about sports, exposing what people go through, not only in sports, but us outside of the sports and how does it affect, you know what I mean, you in sports and out of sports. I think you did a good job with creating a safe haven with allow me just going about going through memory lanes of just my sports journey. You know, cause sports is a journey just like life is a journey. And you created a safe space where it just allowed me to just acknowledge every phase of my journey of like how I overcome, how do I get through like the exposure, you know, exposure in sports is just how you, you know what I mean? How you deal with it, how you yeah. handle that. Yeah. And it was just, you know, God and me wanting more for my life. You know what I mean? If you want more for your life, you gotta, you gotta go. You gotta be driven. You can't be giving up. You can't be making excuses. You gotta be all in. For you sure. gotta have God with you, man. Those are things that uh, people in sports or athletes may not be exposed to, but now they're exposed to it. I think this is a very inspiring story. Yeah. And I pray that there's a student athlete out there that's watching, that's listening, that just seen the real AB. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's me, you know, spiritual being, a guy that's really in tune with his spirit and I had to leave a legacy, not only on the field, but off the field in life. And that's what life's about. You know, as a sports athlete, you're going to live your life more longer off the field, off the court than you is on the court. So you got to think with that in mind when you being a sports athlete, that like your life is going to be longer outside of exactly. the sport. So you want to make sure you put your time and effort in that regards too. For sure. Well, good luck with everything. I hope Thank it's you. not our last conversation. Nah, this is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.